Hey, Ryan, uh, Dennis Feidner with us, CFO on a go, which is uh, obviously Chief Financial Officer on a go. Hey, I'm going to take you for a quick little uh, preview of uh, Sage 100 here. Uh, I've got your list of things you want to see, and I, I agree that those are all important uh, from the accounting side. Uh, and I'm assuming in your notes that you've got the project side covered. Uh, we do that as well. Um, we do scheduling as well. I'm not sure it's what you need, but that's what we do. But I will walk you through some of the things you want to see on the accounting side. So if I go into um, accounts receivable here and I go to um, receivable reports, and I guess I got uh, three, five. I wrote these down so I wouldn't forget them. So anyway, as you can see, I have a lot of different ARs. We don't call them uh, agents. We actually call them call sheets because it has a lot more information than, a, than a, just an agent does. But this one right here, uh, I'm just going to run this, preview this for all jobs. So this is the AR, and so by client, all of the jobs I have for Jessica are right here. This is the retention balance for, for all the jobs I have with her, and those are the phone numbers if I want to just pick up the phone and call them. And again, it just rolls through all of these. And if I want to see this, you know, you want to go see what this makes this up, there it is. I can actually drill right back to the actual invoice if I wanted to. That's the invoice that made that up. And so uh, you can drill down all of this detail. So that's the AR side. I'm kind of going to wrestle through a couple of these here. So if I go to accounts payable, um, I think it's 31. Um, and the same thing, uh, these are all our vendors. Obviously, we could probably customize this thing. If you're only looking for retention, we could probably put a filter on there only if the retention is greater than zero. Uh, but then again, you can look at look through these uh, as well. So that's pretty simple. Um, change orders and close some of these up here. So on change orders, uh, I think we do a great job in handling change orders. And my background is heavy highway uh, general contractor for from probably. Okay, if I told you how long it make me sound really old, so I'm not going to tell you. But it's been a long time. And so if I go into a change order, it, I'm just going to pick one that's already done just to save some time here. In the middle, Ryan, there's two tabs. This is my budget. And this is uh, this is who's going to get the work, Samson Electrical. They already had a subcontract. If I scroll across here, it's going to be change, whoops. It's going to be uh, change order number two for them. You know, it's open because they haven't signed, sent it back signed yet. That's a cost code I want the budget to go to. This side, keep it in my scroll button there, is the same thing, but down from the owner side. So this is... Uh, my cost from the sub was eighteen fifty. I'm asking them for twenty four hundred. They're gonna probably come back and approve twenty three hundred. They also approved eight days of extension up here. So if I just go here, now free to do this real quick. This ought to look really close to the format that you're using. It's the AIA format. Um, so that's what we print out for the owner to sign, and we can print out the same thing for the sub to sign on his side. Uh, the one thing that you will note up here at the very top third button from the right this paper clip is white so if i click that these are the th items that i've attached to this change order so this is a copy of the plans why i changed it uh, this is an email um I've opened on my other screen so this is an email that i got and it says you know whatever uh, i mean this probably sounds familiar by the way i only want to pay half of what you want and can you start today uh and then here's another pdf that i attached so um, I don't even know what this one is. Uh, this is the actual change order where he signed it and we just scanned it back in. So anybody that comes into this change order at a later date can open this up if they have permissions to see exactly the history of what's going on uh, with that change order. So that's that. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to hit everything. We do AIA 702, 703 billings. Um, that's not an issue. This is a nice little report. And it's kind of right here is job number two, kind of in the center here. Here's my original contract value, 278. These are the change orders. This one's still open. So there's the change orders that have been approved. New contract value. Here's what I've invoiced them to date. And here's what the balance on the contract is. So bottom line is um, I can get to, back to any of this detail I want by just double-clicking any of these items. So we do a pretty good job, I think, on doing that. Um, one of the things that I had to make a phone call this morning. Let me um, get into a job real quick here. Um, 
So we do do, you know, pre-lead information. We do lien waivers. Uh, that is part of it. The one that, um, let me just find a job that has something here. Um, so these are all the people that pre leaned the job, who the secondary vendor is, the dates that we tracked all that through. So that's all there. Um, the one that you stumped me on was how to handle uh, subcontract insurance by job rather than just by the vendor. And what we came, whoops, I'm sorry. What we came up with was uh, it would be a custom report, but it's, it's literally it, it won't take us that long to do. Um, I'm just going to find a vendor here. And so if I find a real vendor, um, whoop, there it is. So if I come down here, bottom right hand corner, it says certificates. What we determined was if, if in the description you actually entered um, the job number like one, one, five, one dash workers comp, you know, and then the next one was in the, in the expiration date, we can run a report and we can look and say if this field contains a number, then sort on that number. And then you could get a report with these expiration dates uh, by job, by, and this is by vendor already, but then you could have it by vendor in here. Now you can just come here and look because it'll be in order because you can enter them in order. Or you can create, we can create a report that says, hey, I need to know the status on this job or this vendor on all jobs. We can run that report for you. So uh, uh, anyway, like I said, I, I couldn't figure out how to do that. So I called one of our consultants this morning. But uh, Ryan, I mean, this is full blown AP, uh, full payroll, 941s, W2s, uh, certified payrolls if you guys are doing some of your own work. Uh, change order management, subcontracts we can create. Uh, uh, this is, you know, and I, I've been, like I said, CFO controller in construction for a long time. This is my, one of my favorite reports because I used to have to do this by hand. Uh, and maybe you are today as well. Um, so this is one job, job number 27, Doug's Castle, for an electrical contractor. These three first items were on his original contract. So he had a subcontract for $2,900. He signed and we signed a change order for number one for 500, so his new subcontract is 3,400, and then we sent him change order number two uh, for 1850, which he has not returned yet. And on the next page, the invoices that he's invoiced me for, kind of a summary of where the contract is, and right here the outstanding balance. So, you know, somebody in the field can look at this real quick and say, hey, you know what? The guy hasn't returned his 1850 change order, so I can find out about that. And there's 2,200 sitting in open AP, so the guy hasn't got his check. So he doesn't have to call the office. He can just look right here and know if he's been paid or not. So anyway, really nice little report to manage the subcontractors. And I imagine that a lot of your work is subcontracted. So um, pretty much that was your list. But uh, cost of complete analysis, so you can do forecasting. Uh, Job, all kinds of job reports. One of my favorite committed cost report. Um, so basically, it takes your items, your budget plus approved change orders for cost, your cost to date, outstanding subcontracts, subcontracts that have been written but you've not been invoiced for yet, and the same thing on the purchasing to give you a true remaining budget. And again, if I want to see how I spent twelve thousand dollars, which in probably in your job you get asked a lot. I can scroll right back. Those are the three vendors that I, or three invoices, two vendors that I dealt with. These are the amounts that I paid to them. If I want to roll right back to the, whoops, I go back one more. That's the actual invoice that was entered into AP. So great way to drill back the information, uh, not have to bother the office to get that. It's all going to be at your fingertips. Anyway, tons of other reports. If any of this makes sense, two things I can do. One is I can... Uh, we can get jump online one day and take a deeper dive into this. Uh, two, uh, if you want, and the pricing makes sense, uh, we can actually get you a trial. Uh, the, but first, we'd like to look and make sure that it's within your budget before we get you on there. Uh, so we do have a place that we can let you go up and try it out for a week or so. So let me know if this makes sense at all. If it does, just shoot me an email and we'll set up a date to get together. Hey, have a great weekend. And uh, my name is Dennis, and you can give me a call at 800 659 5851 or you can just shoot me an email. Thanks a lot.